If someone called you the brains in the Bhagata, you ought to be the smartest and the wisest. Friends often come to you for help on their homework or if they need advice. One key figure in Philippine history is also often referred to as the brain, although not the brains of the Bagada, but the brain of the revolution. In this video, we'll dive right into the brain of Apolinario Mabini, retrace his beginnings, understand his political career, and learn about his legacy in the liberation of the Philippines from the Spaniards and Americans. Apolinario Mabini was born on July 23, 1864, in the barrio of Talaga, in the province of Batangas. He was the second of eight children in a family of farmers. Despite being poor and having limited resources, his parents made sure that he received an education, and this paid off really well. He was able to study at Father Valerio Malabanan's school in Lipa, Batangas, where academically distinguished students are given the merit to study instead of the family's ability to pay matriculation. This was exciting news for the young Mabini, as he was known to be a very bright student who showed great aptitude for learning beyond his years. He was particularly interested in philosophy and law. After completing his secondary education in Batangas, Mabini made the courageous decision to move to Manila to study at the Colegio de San Juan de Letran, where he obtained the highest honors in philosophy in 1891. He then went on to study law at the University of Santo Tomas, where he graduated with a law degree in 1894. Mabini soon became a lawyer and worked in Manila, but he did not continue professional legal practice. Much of his knowledge was concentrated on his activities in the Freemasonry when he joined in 1892, and later his socio-political activities as a member of the La Liga Filipina. Being a member of La Liga Filipina opened his eyes to the reform movement in the Philippines. Initially, he was a member of the Cuerpo de Compromisarios, a faction of La Liga Filipina that pushed for reform. However, when José Rizal, another member of La Liga Filipina, was executed for treason by the Spanish regime, he became increasingly disillusioned with the Spanish colonial government and gave his wholehearted support to the Philippine Revolution led by the Katipunan, which began in 1896. Mabini became one of the key leaders of the revolution, serving as an advisor to Emilio Aguinaldo, who was the leader of the revolutionary forces. However, another challenge set in, this time to his health. In 1895, Mabini was struck with polio, an infectious virus that can lead to the permanent disablement of limbs due to paralysis. He slowly lost the ability to walk, until he no longer could by January 1896. Accounts of Mabini say that he was always in a hammock and a rattan chair, and despite not being able to move, his brain became his ultimate contribution to the revolutionary cause, especially when he served as Emilio Aguinaldo's chief advisor. Mabini was a strong advocate of Philippine independence and was one of the architects of the Philippine Republic, which was established on June 12, 1898, with Aguinaldo as its president. Mabini served as the very first Prime Minister of the Philippines, which was a position he held until May 1899. During his tenure as Prime Minister, Mabini played a key role in drafting the Malolos Constitution, the very first constitution of the Philippines. Sadly, this independence would be taken away again, since the Philippine Republic was short-lived. In just a year, the United States, which had just defeated Spain in the Spanish-American War, took control of the Philippines. The Philippine-American War broke out, and Mabini was arrested by the American forces in December 1899 for his involvement in the revolution. However, before his arrest, it should be noted that Mabini negotiated several times with the Americans, calling for a ceasefire and an armistice. Both were met with disagreement, and Mabini eventually supported the war, which led to his arrest. He was exiled to Guam, where he spent two years in detention. In Guam, he wrote La Revolution Filipina. In this work, Mabini delineated the flaws and weaknesses of the revolution and gave an honest critique of Aguinaldo's leadership and governance. Aside from La Revolución Filipina, Mabini dove into literature and wrote several outputs, such as a code of ethics entitled El Verdadero Decálogo, which highlights the ten qualities a Filipino should possess and his own version of a constitution. Mabini returned to the Philippines in 1903, where he was required to swear an oath of allegiance to the United States, 
His taking the oath of allegiance upon his return did not stop him from being involved in activities that continued to push for Filipino independence. The period of the early 20th century was a perilous time for the Philippines, especially in the context of public health and public hygiene. Cholera had already found its way into the streets of Manila and spread to other provinces of the Philippines. It would later gain the status of an epidemic. Sadly, Mabini did not escape this epidemic and he fell victim to cholera. He passed away on May 13, 1903, at the age of 38. Today, Mabini is remembered as one of the most important figures in Philippine history. He was a brilliant thinker and a gifted writer and his contributions to the Philippine Revolution and the early years of the Philippine Republic were invaluable. His ideas and principles continue to inspire Filipinos to this day. One of Mabini's most important contributions was his advocacy for Philippine independence. He believed that the Philippines should be a sovereign nation and that Filipinos should be able to govern themselves. He also believed in the importance of democracy and the rule of law. Mabini was also a strong advocate for education. He believed that education was the key to progress and development, and he worked to improve the educational system in the Philippines. He believed that all Filipinos should have access to education, regardless of their social or economic status. His imposition of quality education is reflective of his contributions to his revolutionary activities. If we allow academic freedom and the space to freely think, critique, and engage in discourse, we would formulate more sustainable solutions to systemic problems. Apolinario Mabini remains an inspiration to many Filipinos. Through his life and work, he remains a shining example of the courage, intelligence, and integrity that are essential to the pursuit of justice and freedom. His life's work reminds us that the fight for independence and democracy is an ongoing struggle, and that we must safeguard and defend these fundamental values. Mabini is venerated today by Filipinos through portrayals in Philippine media, monuments, names of cities, and banknotes, which reflect how much of an influence he has on Philippine history, literature, and education. Unfortunately, with the removal of history subjects from the basic education curriculum, Filipinos are becoming less informed about key figures that shaped our history, like Apolinario Mabini. This only reiterates the call to encourage the study of history, for Mabini is a key figure worth studying and emulating in a time where vigilance to protect our values is imminent. How about you? Would you look into a rigorous study of Apolinario Mabini and other key actors in Philippine history? Tell us about who you would like to emulate and study in the comment section below. Like share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to learn more with us. Thanks for watching.